Hi guys, it's Claire Motara from the Amazon region in Peru and it's the 24th of September in 2024. So I wanted to do a little bit of a story about how I read the tarot cards. It's about 35 degrees Celsius and I'm in my garden underneath my, um, my May tree and soon it will be throwing purple flowers everywhere. And there's my cat. <laughs> So to start off with, I've got about seven different packs of cards. Um, Dorian Virtue, this is, I, I like this one very much, even though she's come to Jesus and has now um, divorced herself from all card work. But I think card work is spiritual too. And I follow Jesus and I'm with Jesus and I believe in Jesus. And I haven't had any strong message that I can't help people with insights in their life and how they can go forward with some good ideas. So I've got several ones of Dorian Virtue that I love. Um, this one I haven't used that much. Um, it's very sort of esoteric, very high energy level, this one. Um, this one I've been, was the first deck that I ever had when I didn't really want to work with tarot cards because I was still afraid of them. And this is um, uh, just about angels and good messages. So it's called an Oracle deck. I've had it for more than 20 years. And this also I have used for a long time, the goddess cards. So that is to do with feminine energies uh, in the different religions and how they have uh, adored or taken for guidance several women, hero, heroes, heroines, heroines. Uh, it also has Virgin Mary in there and various other divine feminine characters. So it's very nice. This one that is now living in a in a little chocolate box that I made. This is the Osho cards, and um, yeah, Osho being a guru as well. Which um, I actually found I respected, uh, learned to respect him a lot for these cards. They are basically based on the Toth cards, but very very nice for people who are a little bit fearful to en encounter a devil in their tarot cards, this this deck is for them. It's a tarot deck and it's based on the Toth deck, but um, he made it so that everything is a little bit more user-friendly. So um, I really, really like this, this deck. Somebody gave it to me. Thank you, David, you know who you are. And uh, it's been ex incredibly helpful for me, um, especially when I'm working uh, in a more public setting where people don't like to be confronted with nasty things. And then here I have the Toss deck again given to me by somebody. Um, the Toss deck is, is one of the earlier things done by Alistair Crowley, the black magician. So we can say that this is this is bad, it's got some bad bad looking cards there. <laughs> but we have to see it in perspective, we have to see it. Um, yeah, it's a nice one. Um, we have to see it that death is just a change from one thing to another. So it can be transformation, it can be uh, a new start for something else. It may, sometimes it means we have to let go of something. Uh, so it just depends on what cards are around it and uh, that will indicate what we have to let go of or what we are changing uh, in our life. So it's not actually a physical death. And the whole thing with the tarot is that it's uh, symbolic. In many places it's just symbolic, it's not physical. So when I uh, actually lay out the tarot, tarot cards, I use the uh, Celtic cross with uh, four cards on the, on the right hand side as extra clarifiers and um, then I see which which people in their lives and which energies in their lives are active and so I <coughs> I look for things with my pendulum so I have my pendulum and uh, this is a crystal pendulum which I use a lot and um, I use it with one of my oracle stones that I found in Chile um, and then I, it indicates which areas of the 
of the layout have got problems. I can usually feel it just by looking at it and see like, oh, oh that doesn't look so great or that is something we could work on. Um, so then I, when there are areas that we have to work on, I put usually stones on it. I have a lot of stones that I put on to that particular thing. And while we put the stone on, we um, start to work on it. So while we're working on it, I ask the person who wants to have the cards read, I ask them what that particular situation entails for them or whether, whether there is a particular emotion connection connected to it. And um, these stones are actually working with the Akashic Records. Um, I had a, a vision once when I was already in bed. I was just about to nod off to sleep. I saw a whole bunch of lights coming down and I was wondering what that was and it said uh, we are star energies that have come to help you and it's not a joke that's what they said and they gave me a date when they were would be there with me and they actually came on that date um, my stones started to download all uh, special energies like spirits spirit energies and what I feel is that they are like spirit energies from uh, Buddha type people who are not in the body anymore but they still want to help humanity and so they came in there to talk about the Akashic records of people and uh, while the stone is on the card the particular card that needs to have the attention um, all sorts of emotions and thoughts and um, past life things may come forward so that the person starts to feel uh, they're actually looking deeper and deeper into that situation uh, like could be an ex-lover or someone who never left them be alone. There was one funny story about a person who had, uh, she was with a loving husband and they were having a good relationship. But um, this person, this card came up which looked like uh, one of the knights uh, in the tarot deck. And I said, who is this? And uh, I said, have you had any, uh, because I checked if it was her husband that was not. I said, have you had any ex-lovers that, you know, maybe you didn't break up 100% or they were very unhappy or something like that. And she said, uh, gave me a couple of names and my pendulum indicated one of them. And that one, apparently, I said, that one is actually going on the dog that is, came uh, as a stray dog to your house and you adopted that dog. And he's sitting on that dog and he doesn't allow you to have a relationship with your husband. And she said, yes, it's true. It is. It's, you have to break the contract with that spirit that he can actually go on and that he has to let go of you. So I gave them some exercises to do and um, that will help them to break free and get that spirit of the dog because the dog by itself is just a friendly dog. It not as, but um, a person who is very addicted or attached to another person can actually present themselves on the animals around you or on a bird or even the dead people can do that and uh, when you look at it you can you think about them and uh, it's like they give you a message through the animals around you so that's a known thing in shamanism so this is what I do um, and I can do it online with via whatsapp and people can uh, actually see my cards when flip the phone to look on the table and the layout and we can talk while we're doing the the stones on top of the cards and everything like that and um, yeah it costs a, a little bit but um, you get about two hours and and I give you a, a little video or a little description of all the cards that you, we end up with because the thing is once we've talked about the, the card that has the stones on them the cards that have the stones on them once we finish with that um, I check with the uh, pendulum whether that energy is still on that card or if that card is still there, is still applic applicable there. And usually it says no. So they don't take that card away. And then I'll let the people pull another card. Or if they are actually on the other side of the phone, I knock the deck um, thinking of them and saying their name. And then I take a couple of cards for them to replace the card that I took away. So in that way, we can usually, it nearly always is better nearly always a better card so they have changed something in their mind um, which will help them to attract a better future and to have less negative energy dragging them down 
So in that way, I don't believe in the cards predicting the future. I believe in you making the future. But if you have negative thoughts, then of course that will influence your future because in some way you will bring that negativity into your life if it is really going around in your head a lot of the time. Or if you feel very, very guilty about something, it'll bring bad energy into your life. So that's how I work. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, I hope it's been informative for you. And uh, you can reach me through uh, Messenger of Facebook or you can get me on the um, the email that I put on this video. Okay, thank you very much. God bless. Bye bye.